What's up you guys? I'm gonna be showing off my other carnivorous plant terrarium. Starting out I have a bit of cheap lights from Amazon. They're about 40 bucks. Just look up uh, aquarium LEDs. These were, I forget the brand, but I'm pretty sure any cheap brand with over four stars is pretty good. I mean they're not, the ones I have in here aren't too picky with the light, especially since I have the window right here. And that's what really makes the difference in the morning. They get that little bit of sunlight. Let's check out what we got. On the left in this plastic container here, I have just a bunch of moss growing. Originally, I had some cuttings from my Venus fly traps, but those didn't take too well. They were just flower cuttings. Over here, we have some biophytum sensitivums here. The adults are in the back, this little palm tree looking guy. There's another one here. They're nice little terrarium plants. But the main thing in here are these pinguiculas, these big old carnivorous butterworts. This is Gigantia, I believe. This is a recent cutting from the parent plant. Bunch of gnats that it caught already. And when, I noticed when it does it, the, the leaves kind of fold over. But Pinguicula agnata cross emarginata has caught even more gnats. Look at all those. Let's get a closer look. Bunch of little gnats that it caught. These are fairly easy to keep. I mean, it stays room temperature in the room here. The lights don't get too hot either. And then I just spray here and there, making sure the trays are nice and wet. Down here we got Lanea cross emarginata. This one wasn't doing too well in the other terrarium, so I took it out. But what really helps them to grow is the gnats. It's just fertilizing them properly. They love bugs. Obviously, there was a ton, just a ton of gnats in here. It was nasty. It was an infestation. But I sprayed some neem oil, and most of them died. But there's still a few left. So the Butterworth ate most of them. So this guy is Genlisi flexilosa cross lobata, and he's growing a really nice little flower stalk there. But I like this little guy, because he's kind of a more obscure carnivorous plant. And they make nice little flowers once they come out. Over here, I forgot what this is called. I forgot the name of this guy. Let me know if you know what it is in the comments. But he's pretty cool. He doesn't, doesn't get pests. He vines a lot. Pretty happy. Make sure the soil is nice and moist for him too. It's got a little log down there so any critters can hide down there. I put in some isopods. Back here we have Drosera petiolaris. It wasn't doing too good outside because it was really hot the past few weeks. So I moved it in here and it seems to be coming back. And then this is the parent um, Pinguicula gigantea. Still caught a ton of gnats. Dang, look at all those. Now the mix of leaves and dirt in the bottom isn't the carnivorous plant mix that I use. I put uh, regular potting soil for that, just so the biophytums can grow a little better. And so I'll have the carnivorous ones in their own pots so they get their own soil. And yeah, I only recommend Pinguiculas for these kind of terrariums. Pinguiculas and genlisis, they do great in here. Things like uh, Saracenia and Dianea, pitcher plants, the bigger ones, and Venus flytraps, they do better outdoors. Except for Nepenthes that I have in my other terrarium. But I'll go over that one in a little bit. Alrighty, guys, keep growing and let me know if you have any questions.